The great sacred cow of the United Kingdom seems to be in a permanent state of crisis. Headline today from The Independent. NHS won't cope. 40% of junior doctors plan to quit, survey reveals. From November 2021, headline from The Guardian. NHS in crisis mode as hospitals told to discharge patients where possible. Another headline from The Guardian, December 2020. <clears throat> NHS hospitals running out of beds as COVID cases continue to surge. From 2019, without the excuse of COVID, headline from The Guardian again. NHS winter crisis fears grow after thousands of EU staff quit. Seems to be a bit of a running theme here, doesn't there? Pandemic or no pandemic, the money-guzzling bureaucratic beast seems to be suffering from one form of crisis or another. Many say that we should continue shoveling millions, if not billions, onto it. As my next guest calls it, anyway, the ever-burning furnace of the NHS budget. But that furnace burnt through £199 billion in the year from 2021 to 2022. Perhaps... Just maybe it's time to admit that the sacred cow is in fact a fatted calf in dire need of a gastric band. I'm joined now by spectator columnist Sam Ashworth Hayes, who feels that he can save the NHS. Sam, take it away. Um, I mean, that's that's a large claim. I can I can certainly point to some suggestions for making it better, but I you know I do fear it might be beyond saving. Mm. Um, but the, the core, the real core of this, when you get down to it, is that when you look at what the NHS spends and then you look at what we get out of it, there's this huge disconnect. We spend, I think, per person a little bit less than sort of other rich countries. But what we get in terms of health outcomes is much less. So there's this, there is a fundamental problem with the NHS of resource allocation, which it's doing things enormously inefficiently. And the way that we fix it, or the government thinks we fix this, is to just throw more money at it and never try and address the underlying problems. Because, as you say, it's a sacred cult of British politics. Well, how do we actually do that? Because reducing the budget sounds unpalatable, doesn't it, to a lot of people? The solution just seems to be more money, more money, more money, pay rises, pay rises, pay rises. Whereas, as far as I can see, people who actually work in the NHS just don't really want to be in the NHS. They'd quite like to go abroad and earn more money. It's almost, almost like their main priority is making money and not saving lives, Sam. I mean, I, I have absolutely no issue with people trying to get as paid for as much of their skills as possible. It's certainly what I do in my job. Um, but I think there are, there are, as you say, real efficiency problems with the NHS. And a lot of this comes down to the way it's organised. It's a, it's a government bureaucracy, effectively, where these, these targets are set and the budgets are allocated. And there's no real market pressure anywhere to perform well, to keep costs down, to actually manage the system in an efficient way. And this leads to all of these really weird and um, strange distortions. So, you know, we lag behind the rest of the developed world in healthcare equipment for work at things like CT scanners, mm. X-ray machines. But we don't just lag behind the developed world. We, we lag behind countries which are poorer than we are. It's not that we don't have the money. It's that we're spending it badly because the Treasury has this weird obsession with cutting the capital budget to move it to current consumption. But why, um, Sam, know, Sam, 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 the, why are these people's the, names never in the press? This is what I don't understand. We have whoever our health secretary is at any given moment, their names are splashed all over the press. The shadow health minister, they'll be all over the press. We've got nurses on picket lines, paramedics on picket lines. They're always in the press. Why don't we ever find out who the living heck is wasting our cash? So obviously we get to, we get to hear about the head of NHS England a bit. But as you say, it's, we don't hear much about the people who are actually doing this and spending the money at the sort of local hospital level. Um, and part of the problem is when you actually look at what can the government do to address the NHS, how can it actually get it to do this or that, um, there's not actually that much in the way of levers it can easily pull. Um, half, of the, half of what it basically would have to do is to find legislation to, 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 to allow it to make changes. Um, the, actual, the actual sort of policy instruments it has in, on hand day to day are surprisingly limited, and they're really quite constrained by all of these arcane pieces of paperwork like the NHS constitution. Uh, many of which seem to be set up for the interests of the health service um, yeah. and its self-preservation rather than for the interests of the people it's supposedly serving, which is you and me. Well, I mean, I interviewed a chap earlier on today uh, after the news broke that four in ten junior doctors are apparently wanting to leave. Their starting salaries are cool, 29 grand. They can work their way up to 58 grand or so. Obviously, if you do private work on top of that or become a specialist, then it does get even higher. They say that's not enough. They'd rather train in this country at universities, rack up a load of student debt at the taxpayer's expense, and then go and just work in Australia, really. That seems to be... The gist, doesn't it? And I can't help but wonder whether or not our NHS is being taken for a ride, dare I say it, by some of the people who work in it for a bit. 
I mean, part, part of the problem here, I think, is that the NHS is a miserable experience to work within um, because those junior doctors, as you say, could, could be earning more elsewhere, but also um, they're going to be doing a load of front work that they don't need to do. So you go and you talk to these doctors and you say, well, what are you doing with your days? What, how do you actually spend it? Mm. And they'll tell you, I spend X amount of hours waiting for the IT system to work. I spend this much time making phone calls to other wards and then walking down there because the phone system doesn't work. I spend this much but time Sam, chasing doctors. But there. Sam, that's not the government's fault, is it? That's the fault of the people who the government entrusts to run the NHS. Why aren't these people, you know, being harangued by the staff who work for them? Why is it Steve Barkley, bless him? Well, exactly. I mean, this is this is exactly what I'm saying. There's sort of no accountability within the NHS structure itself. So when it fails, all of the attention goes to the politicians who actually don't have that many levers to improve the efficiency within the system. And this is why I've you know, written this piece, basically setting out the point that because there is no market discipline, because it's a sort of government bureaucracy with all the incentives that these bureaucracies have to preserve themselves and mm. to avoid ever sort of being held to account, you've ended up in a situation where money just gets shoveled onto the fire um, things don't improve, services don't improve, we sort of have very bad outcomes by a number of standards relative to how much we're spending. Um, and at the same time, no one can really find a way of getting away from that because the moment you say, well, let's look at how they do it in Holland, let's look at how they do it in France, Switzerland, where, the, where you know, private spending does make up a bigger mm. chunk of uh, healthcare, people turn around and come up with these ridiculous scare stories about how you want to be America. Something like £199 billion pounds being pumped into anything. And then the end result of that money being spent is woeful. In any other line of work or any other industry, would you not launch a money laundering investigation? <laughs> I don't think they're money laundering. I think they're just very bad at spending it because they're, it, it's just run by these sort of slightly arcane bureaucracies, which just have no discipline to keep costs down. Um, I mean, you know, well, I mean, take, take this figure, for instance. The NHS is the largest employer in Europe and something like 2% of the British population are working for it. So it's one in every 50 people you meet who have a job somehow connected to the NHS. It's mobilizing a huge amount of resources. It's spending a huge amount of resources. But there's no price system saying this is what people value right now. There's no market demand. But you have these weird government targets. And so you just have this complete inefficiency where resources are diverted towards things which look good on the front line, like spending on more doctors and nurses, rather than spending yeah. on the staff that support But it's them. a cult, Sam. Oh, it's, a, it's a cult, sorry. right? It's a cult, yeah. OK? Because when you have NHS staff who are at ground level, like the junior doctor I spoke to earlier today, or nurses, or ambulance workers, and you ask them a pretty straightforward question, which is, what amount of money are you on? And let's say they normally give me a response of between 25 and 35 grand. And I say to them, right, even if you worked your way up the pay scale and you got yourself to 50 grand, how do you feel about the chap who is director of lived experience, who's on £150,000? Is his job or her job worth three times more than yours? You're the one saving lives. And they always say the same thing. Oh, well, I couldn't possibly comment on Everyone has a different amount of worth. That's a cult, isn't it? It's like they're being brainwashed. They can't eat their own. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, this, this is completely correct because the UK, people say the Church of England is our national church. It isn't. It's the NHS. The NHS is the most sacred object in British politics. You can't touch a player finger on it. You can't change it. You can't alter it. Um, and the people within it know that. And so you get these bureaucracies, as you say, which spend huge amounts wastefully, which are mm -hmm. looking to their own interest in many cases and creating these strange jobs which probably wouldn't exist if they were more Marx oriented um, And you just, you, you can't actually say any of this because you come out and you say, well, this is probably not the best way of spending the money. And people turn around and say, well, it's our NHS is the world's best health service. And the fact is it just isn't. It's actually pretty mm. subpar. Yeah, absolutely. Sam, thank you very much. That is Spectator's economist Sam Ashworth-Hayes, who feels, well, that the NHS might be a bit tricky to save.